What's going guys? Alex Chase, I'm back with a brand new video. Hopefully, I'm going to for you tonight. Every guys on this world, and for today's video, I'm going to be giving my... So every month throughout this season, I'm going to give who do I think is going to win MVP, all the awards. So basically, we're going to be doing an award ceremony every month of the NBA season up to the official thing, which is in June. So we have a few months to go, but for this month, we're going to start it off with, you know, the first month of the season just ended. It's October 17th, and then the, fir the first game was October 16th, so a month and one day into it. And amazed, let's get started with MVP. Each award, I have three picks. So, and not, I'm not going to say the same stat for every player. For example, MVP. My first pick is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Now, I'm going to talk about Giannis's rebounds and blocks and steals, because that's kind of what he does. But then for my second choice... I might not talk about that. So for each person, it's a little different, but the same stuff is going to be points, rebounds, and assists. But after that, I might be a little more in-depth. Anyways, my first pick so far this season, Giannis Antetokounmpo on the 11-4 box. They're balling. They are doing amazing, but especially he's balling, averaging 26 points a game, 12 rebounds, almost two blocks, almost two steals, and five assists per game. That's insane. He is a defensive monster, offensive monster. You can't stop him. He can shoot the outside three when he's open, but most of his points are going in, driving and dunking on you or just overpowering you in the paint or shooting a little mid-range jumper. But he is killing it. That's, it's amazing like how much power and force he just puts on and just goes through everybody like they're not there. My second pick... Stephen Curry. Yes, he's been out for almost two weeks now. The Quinn Cook starting, but before that, and I'm not going to be surprised if he does the same thing when he comes back soon, because, you know, it's Stephen Curry. He's shooting better than he did his MVP season a few years ago. I didn't even know that was possible. He is shooting better. Not worse, not the same. Better. That's insane. He's averaging 29 points a game, five rebounds, one a steal. That's a pretty good stat line, you know. Let's go over it again. Almost 30 points a game. Five rebounds. One steal. Oh, sorry, I didn't say it before. Four assists. That's an amazing stat line. And assists are a little low in, but compared to other years. But he is shooting the ball so efficiently. Like, it's crazy. He is shooting better than he did his MVP season a few years ago. It's amazing. My number three pick is a little different than what you guys probably would think. Kawhi Leonard. He is really taking the Raptors by himself. Yes, Kyle Lowry's actually having his best statistical season ever, like in all like the deep, deep stats I looked at, but we're not, Kyle Lowry's not going to be an MVP candidate. Like, this is like realistic. This is my opinion. Yes, he could. He is probably a top three MVP candidate right now just based on the deep, deep stats that the, like the real, real guys look at, but for me, Kyle Lowry's balling out. 25 points a game. Nine rebounds, three assists, two steals, one block. He's like Giannis, but not quite up there. Like, not on the same level. Giannis has just taken a humongous step this season. They're basically the same player, but Giannis is a little bit more efficient down low. Kawhi Leonard can shoot a little bit better, but Giannis is just a little bit more efficient than Kawhi Leonard. So, number one, Giannis. Number two, Stefan. And number three, Kawhi. Those are my top three picks for MVP. Now um, let's go to Rookie of the Year. Number one choice for Rookie of the Year. This shouldn't be a surprise. I'm actually surprised by this. Luka Doncic. Yes, I made a video earlier in the season saying Luka Doncic would M win MVP. I just, I didn't think he'd be averaging this. I mean, not MVP. Rookie of the Year. <laughs> I didn't think he'd be averaging this many points. Almost 20 points a game. Six rebounds. Four assists. He bumps that stuff up a little bit. He's all-star. His points are fine, but if he gets the rebounds up just a tad, assists up a tad, all-star player right there. Luka Doncic is really showing that he just was not good in the EuroLeague. He's good in the NBA against tremendous players that are on a whole nother level than the EuroLeague. Got to give it up to Luka, and he's helping Dallas not win games, really, but he's making their future look very, very bright. Number two, DeAndre Ayton. He's averaging 16 points a game. 10 rebounds, 3 assists. He's averaging a double-double rookie center. Yes, the Suns are kind of bad, but their future looks very bright with DeAndre Ayton, Devin Booker, TJ Warren, Josh Jackson. 
uh, the list goes on. They have so much young talent that I can't wait to see them in like in three, four, five years when their team completely fully blossoms to their max potential. My number three pick, Trey Young. 16 points a game, three rebounds, eight assists. He's shooting the three extremely bad this year. He's making like one out of six threes per game, which is actually atrocious. But the eight assists is where, where it blows my mind and the fact that the Hawks have not that much shooting. They have Vince Carter, who's one of their best three-point shooters this year, and the man's 41 years old. Terry and Prince, like they don't really have that much talent, but he's getting eight assists. So that just means he's really like getting open looks for these guys that can, because they're NBA players that can make it, but he's getting, that means he's really getting open looks. And from what I've seen, all his points are really coming in from the paint and like the uh, mid-range area. Because like I said, he's shooting the ball from three very, very poorly. Like I think he's shooting like 200, per, like 20%, something really bad like that. He's like making one out of six three. Uh, yeah, it's something bad. But if he gets his three up, the sky's the limit for him. Stephen Curry at 2.0. Let's move on to Defensive Player of the Year. Now for Defensive Player of the Year, you're probably gonna say, oh my God, you just like him too much. No, he is actually balling out. He could win two awards this year. Giannis Antetokounmpo for Defensive Player of the Year. Yes, he's getting two awards this NBA season so far, but he deserves it. 1.5 blocks and 1.3 steals. That's not easy to do. He is balling out on the defensive side of things. He's, he has a seven foot seven wingspan. My wingspan's probably like a, a little over 60 because I do have very long arms and I'm like 5'11", 5'11 and a half. So his wingspan is like another foot each, it's crazy. Another foot each direction. That is insanity. He is such a big man and also getting three steals. Like he, he's up. It's crazy. Just keep doing it, Giannis. You're one of my favorite players in the league. Number two, this is no, no biased intended, Al Horford. Our offense, actually terrible, but the Boston Celtics have the number one defense in the league. If we just scored the ball a little bit more and didn't suck on the offensive end, except Kyrie, you're doing fine, we probably have like the best record in the NBA. We have the best defense with one of the worst offenses in the league. That does not really mix very well, but Al Horford averaging 1.7 blocks and one steal per game. That's pretty darn good. Now, number three, this is gonna be a little surprising. I, I mean, I've seen other people have said this in other videos I've, I, other videos I've watched on who's gonna like, cause they're doing monthly awards. I actually got this video idea from King of the Fourth Quarter to do this series, but he said Steven Adams and I actually have to agree with him. So Steven Adams. 1.6 blocks, 1.5 steals. Besides Paul George, OKC does not really have a defensive presence at all. Steven Adams, I think he could have won defensive player like multiple times in his career. He gets a lot of blocks, when I say a lot of blocks, almost two blocks a game. So that's really, really good. And he almost gets two steals a game. If he keeps doing that, he could even bump up above Al Horford and maybe Giannis. That's just my opinion. Now let's go to six man of the year. <clears throat> Lou Williams. Six man of the year. He might have heard me out uh, cough in the last segment. I had to pick three people, but it's obviously going to be Lou Williams. He's the best six man in the league, averaging 19 points a game off the bench. They offer him the starting job, but he's like, no. Avery Bradley, you can start. I want to come off the bench because that's where I shine when I'm playing all the bums. Anyways, no, but for real, he was balling out against the starters on the Golden State Warriors. He kills it. Like, no, he doesn't just play bums. He plays everybody, but because he plays a lot of minutes, but he comes off the bench. Six man, Lou Williams, that's my number one pick, averaging 19 points, two rebounds, four assists. Yes, his stats down are down a little bit, like last year he was averaging like 25, but he still, he still has plenty of time to bump that up. And yes, he's like 33 years old, so it's gonna go down, that's what you expect. But 19 points off the bench, that's tremendous. My number two pick, he's kind of cooled down a little bit from his amazing start, but Julius Randle, 17 points, eight rebounds and three assists. That's still wicked good. He's kind of cooled down a little bit, so it might drop a little bit. As of right now though, he's my second pick for six man of the year. Now my number three pick, JJ Redick. He, I know now he is starting that they traded for Jimmy Butler, but he's only started two games so far this season. But like, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick him, but he could, you have to like play like more than 30 games 
as a starter for you considered not to be sixth man of the year. But as of right now, he's only started two games. So JJ Redick is my number three pick, averaging 18 points a game, three rebounds, and three assists. He's one of the best shooters in the league. If someone's on him, he's going to make it. If someone's not on him, he's going to make the damn shot. He is the one of the best three-point shooters in the league besides Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, and those guys. JJ Redick is right up there with the best of them. Now let's go to most improved. Most improved was actually very hard. Not at all. Zach Levine went from 16 points a game to 26. Hear that voice crack? 26 points a game. That's crazy. The Bulls have a lot of potential in this kid. He's like 24, 25. If the rest of their team maybe did a little bit better, they could probably get a 7th, 8th seed. But right now they're playing pretty bad. But Zach Levine, you don't have to be on a very any good team to win uh, most improved. For like MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, you have to be on a pretty solid team. But every other every other award doesn't really matter. So Zach Levine, he's probably going to win most improved. Averaging went from 16 points to 26 points a game. That's a 10 plus points a game. That's going to help out the Bulls a lot in the long run. My number two pick, Mini Draymond Green. Pascal Siakam. I say Mini Draymond Green. He kind of plays like Draymond Green. A big defensive presence, especially this year. And now he's scoring the ball a little bit be better. He went from 7 points a game to 14 points a game. Draymond Green only averaged around 10 points a game. So Pascal Siakam could be a better Draymond Green in the future because he's a big defensive pres presence. Plus, he can shoot the ball and help out the Toronto Raptors try to win a championship over the Boston Celtics. But that won't happen. Anyways, my number three pick, my boy. Karis LeVert, I made a video on him a few days ago, Joe, go check it. I mean, he broke his foot. Well, actually, it turned out that I said he actually broke, he, he just dislocated his ankle. Nothing bad, so that's very good. He'll be back later this season. I don't know if that means like in a month or like three months or he'll be back for the last week of the season, but he will be back this NBA season. And he, have, he went from 12 points a game last year to 18 points a game. That's a potential, especially the Eastern Conference. That's a potential all-star numbers right there. Good looks, um, good looks for uh, Karis LeVert. He bumped up those numbers. And the Brooklyn Nets, they have a bright future with this 22-year-old Karis LeVert. Now let's go to uh, Coach of the Year. Number one pick for Coach of the Year really is not that, like, confusing. I'm... Number one pick for Coach of the Year, obviously got to go to Nick Nurse, Toronto Raptors coach. 13-4 and four record last year and every other year before that when Dwayne Casey was their coach. Couldn't get past LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers last year. Best record in the Eastern Conference. Got swept by LeBron James and LeBron James. That's all they had. The Celtics got them to seven games. And last year in the playoffs, obviously the Raptors had a better team than the Celtics. So they needed a change. They got Nick Nurse. Nick Nurse is really, really coaching the team very well. They got Kawhi Leonard. They're one of the better defensive uh one of the better defensive teams in the league, one of the best offensive teams in the league. They look really, really good, and I'm going to give my number one spot for Coach of the Year to Nick Nurse. Number two, Mike Budenholzer of the Milwaukee Bucks. The Milwaukee Bucks, the past three, three years, they've been an average team with Jason Kidd. They've always been a fifth, sixth seed, like around there. They never went over the hump. This year, they went over the hump with an 11-4 record, and Mike Budenholzer is really showing um, like a really good formation. I forget what it's called, but it's a formation where like they don't really shoot mid-range shots. They either take really low post shots or threes. That's why Giannis is being very efficient this year. I talked about that a little bit earlier in the video, but I forget what the formation is called. But like they do not they do not take mid-range mid-range shots at all. Like um, every blood so. 94% of his assists are from the three or down low. Chris Middleton, 98% of his um, uh, assists are from down low or the three. And then Giannis, 92% of his um, assists are from down low or the three. So they're not shooting anywhere in the mid-range. They either take threes or down low shots. Now that's working for them. Let's hope it keeps working for them without the mid-range shot, really. I'm like, only 3%, 4%, 5% of their shots are mid-range shots. Anyways, number three. This is a little bit of a surprise, especially for me saying this, because I didn't think this was even possible. Doc Rivers. The Clippers, who do they have? Exactly. Crickets. There actually are crickets outside. I don't know if you can hear them. I don't know if the camera picks up. Anyways, Doc Rivers. He has the Clippers right now 
10 and 5. They're on a four game win streak. They're the thir third seed in the Western Conference. I don't know if that's completely right. I forget. Let me go check. My bad. They were the four they're the fourth seed. Fourth seed. I had a list there. They are still doing amazing though with a 10 and 5 record. They're on a four game winning streak. And if Doc Rivers keeps us up with this no name team, that's coach of the year right there. If they get a third, fourth, fifth seed in the Western Conference, which is the toughest conference compared to the Eastern Conference, that's pretty good. They have Shy Gildas, Alexander, like they have Tobias Harris, Avery Badley, Lou Williams, but like still, like there's really no round star on their team. Like they have Tobias Harris, Avery Bradley, and the best six man in the league, my boy Lou Will. But other than that, like they really do not have anybody. They peril, but they don't really have any great players. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like always, peace.